when at 15, she was told about the cancer and how it would soon kill her mother. It seemed to Clara that, like a dimension of her brother's absence that expanded at the close of each new day, this tumor had been gradually filling her mother's skull, slowly pushing the light out of their house. Clara prepared her message on the windowsill of the shed in the dim light. Dear Tillman, she wrote with the pencil from her school bag, please send me a letter with this bird. She knew better than to ask him to come home. I made you a present, she wrote hoping to entice him. See if you can find it. After Clara's brother had been gone for a full year, and her mother's fits of weeping and formidable tantrums ceased, a new, clipped practicality had appeared to enter her. She seemed then to be perpetually angered by the superficiality of a world that could go on with its business in the face of the total dematerialization of her son. Whenever he could, her grandfather included a likeness of Tillman in his carving, hoping perhaps that the god for whom he carved for would interpret this as a petition or a prayer. When she broke the beads, she had been throwing all the bright days away. In the house, she ran up the stairs to the sunroom, where she searched furiously for any frail bits of Eamon that she might not have discarded. Measurements, that one photograph, all that she had thrown away. Putting herself on a rigid schedule so that each waking moment was filled with activity. Tillman remembered the way the young woman's buttocks and calves showed when the man had put water there and the glistening snail tracks on her belly that as an adult Tillman would realize meant that she had born a child. I killed him with steel. There was a job for more money at the steel mill and I made him take it. Tillman did talk about the war, making reference to his artificial leg and telling her about the great battle in which he had participated until he was wounded out. You have no idea how awful it was. Nobody has any idea. But like a long live affair that had ended in sorrow, the Vimy Memorial would not relinquish the large space it had occupied in his heart. Tillman grabbed him out of his sleeve as he sank, only then noticing the small circle of the temple. When he let him go, the boy fell back into the trench from which they had just emerged. Through the next 20 minutes of chaos, Tillman froze in a crouching position, his back to the Germans. Moved with a flight of her familiar clothing, opening like the petals of a dark flower on the river, she wept a little what suddenly seemed to be the death of her year womanhood, a discarded body floating away on the sea, 
the arms of black blouse extended as if anticipating a lover's embrace. There was nothing that was not affected by it. He became withdrawn, tacked him even in the friendly company of his fellow carvers. Even in the fate lamplight, Clara could see that he was wounded. 